Hi right, guys, in this video I will discuss how to repair metal type of pipes. For example, like on fuel lines, uh, transmission lines, brake lines. Also how to flare them and use compression fitting and how to bend them or custom make lines. This particular line I got off a 91 Firebird and actually had it actually had a Saginaw type of fitting on it for the fuel line and there's a little rubber seal over there. So first things first is if you want to say cut it, you get yourself a pipe cutter and say this is a damaged line and you just want to cut that tip off so you can put on the fitting on this tip over here. What you do is Home Depot sells these or Lowe's or any plumbing supply, even the auto parts store. This actually has a cutting wheel on top over here and has a Phillips head screw. You can actually replace that. And there's two little rollers in the bottom. It's like a little vice, vice type of device. And all you have to do is just put it between the rollers and clamp down on it. And as you go down, say two turns or so, and every second turn, just clamp down a little bit and it'll slowly cut off. Don't do this too quick, don't, don't clamp on it too fast because you're going to bend the pipe. This is an actual 3 8 line and it, you know, it depends what you're doing, you're working on brake lines are like 5 16 or or transmission lines are 3 8 also, some fuel lines are half inch. So as you can see that's a nice flush cut, I actually cut both ends and this actual tool has a deburring type of tool in the back like that so that's just used to actually go into the hole and deburr it of any sharp edges there might be so always do that before flaring it also if this is a fuel line make sure if you if you deburr it or cut it Make sure you blow some compressed air in it so all the shavings, there's no shavings to go into your, clog your injectors or anything like that. Or your transmission lines. You don't want anything going into your transmission like that either. So now that you have it cut, you can buy these fittings in your auto parts store, again. Any AutoZone or any whatever home, you know, Pep, pep Boys or wherever you like to go. You put the fitting in with the threaded piece on top. Now, you could always, it doesn't hurt to actually use some sandpaper and clean this edge a little bit, this tip, just to make sure you have a nice surface over here when you flare it down. So this particular flare I'm going to do is a single flare. There's also double flares, there's also ISO bubble flares, so there's different types of flares. You have to make sure you have the flaring tool for your job. And over here there's different size pipes that you can actually flare with, use to flare. And as you can see here, this attachment is a single flare. It just goes in, push it, and flares it out. This also you could buy in your auto parts dealer. And what you want to do here is you grab the size that is actually a little smaller than the actual pipe. So you could grab onto it. For example, this one will work nicely in this hole right here. And when you put this in here, make sure it's sticking out just very slightly. You might want to go a little bit lower than that. Something like that. Because you see the groove in there? You see this little notch over here? This, this uh, step in here? That's going to actually flatten out behind the flare so the fitting can actually sit on it nice, nicely in the back. So once you have it where you want it, you just vise it down. And make sure you do this fairly tight because you you're going to be per putting a lot of pressure on that end over there and you don't want it to go through. So once you have that in there, you take your actual flaring tool and you put it in there and make sure it sits nice and flush in there and just turn it down. And once you have it down there, Make sure everything looks right, everything's square in there, you don't want this cockeyed or anything like that. And just start clamping down on it. 
So let me do that. And like I said, you want it to sit flush in there, in that little step in there. So once you're done, you pretty much can't go any further. It'll look something like that. As you can see, it's pressed all the way in there. So let me take this off now to show you what it looks like. And you undo these vice wing nuts. And that's a perfect flare right there. And that's how it sits flush inside there. That's exactly how you want it to look. Also, when you do this, make sure you look in here for any hairline cracks. Because uh, that, that will leak. And if you put this on actual fuel line, make sure you pressurize the system. Uh, if you have like a aftermarket fuel pump with a switch, turn it on. Make sure there's no leaks. If there is, tighten it down. Also check for any cracks in there. Same thing with a regular car. You just uh, keep it on a hot, don't crank it, so you can prime the pump and pressurize the fuel system. That's what that end will look like. And you can see back there where it sat on the actual tool over here. Give a nice uh, surface flat to seat down. That's perfect. Now, if you want to, say, bend this line a little bit, there's also a pipe bender you could buy. Same thing, you could buy this Home Depot or your auto parts store, Lowe's, whatever. This is like, this actually works like an uh, exhaust bender, like those big machines, but a lot smaller. I'm just going to bend a little bit of this pipe here, from here, let me go out here and bend this. So what you do is you put it inside, and there's different types of sizes here for the lines. And over here it tells you what size the bend will be. So you pretty much put it in there. You put it in there and you clamp down on it. And make sure this holds the other end. So you can actually, let me show you what that's going to look like. And when you're satisfied with the bend, you could take it out and you made yourself a nice little bend. Make sure there's no kink here. This tool is pretty good so it's not going to kink. And this, this tool is very inexpensive. You can make some nice shapes like I did here. So you can pretty much do anything over there. If you find yourself that you really did it too much and it kinked, uh, you can always use an open-end wrench, try to smooth it out and work it and open it up a little bit. Also, if you're working with small brake lines, you can also, you can also do those by, by hand. And I have, I have had great success doing that by hand, but make sure it doesn't kink when you're doing it by hand. You can also use the same tool for small brake lines. Now let's use a compression fitting. Let's say you want to cut it here and add it to another cut piece of uh, 3 8 line, like in this case. Let me show you what I mean. And you want to join the two. First, make sure it's a nice straight piece so you can put the compression fitting on. And you just clamp down like it did before. You clamp down on that. Sorry guys, I'm having, all right, there you go. And same, same procedure as before. Actually, let me go out a little bit. I went too far out. Let's go right in the middle for this one. There you go. And same procedure, go around two times and you'll feel it loosen up and then cut right there. Now, of course, you can deburr it like I did before. Also, get a little bit of sandpaper in this case and just make sure you clean it the outside very well where the actual compression union is going to sit. Right, that's it for now. I don't want to go and bore you. And you can get yourself something like this. This is a 3 8 pipe. It's a 3 8 compression union. That's what they look like when you go to the auto parts store. And your compression union looks something like this. There's a, there's a union in the middle with threads on it on either side. Then you have nuts on, on either end. And make sure you put it on the actual pipe the way it comes in in the kit. You're going to see over here the ends of the pipe are more rounded on this side of the nut. That's where the pipe goes into. Oh, sorry about that. And this is the inside. You can only go one way. 
and this is the ferrule inside. I'll show you what that does in a second. Now, I did this, this could happen, let's say, for, as an example, I had a 91 Lumina once, and I changed the fuel filter underneath, and as I changed the filter, I primed the pump, and gas was leaking from on top of the actual gas tank. Now, what I did in that case was, I cut it, I made a line, I used a compression fitting, I primed it again with the gas tank down to see if there's any fuel leaks. If there is, I you tighten it back down, this compression union, I'll show you how to do that. And what I also did was, to prevent the headache of actually having to do this again while the comp if the compression union actually leaked again, what I did was I just went around it with some JB Weld and filled in everything around here, around the whole compression union, just so I can make sure it won't ever leak again. So you might want to do that if you're sticking one of these somewhere with a real uh, pain in the ass to get to. Now when you put this in, you put it in like this, and the, you use the ferrule, you put it right in there, you put the knife first and the ferrule, and you just bring them both up until it's like pretty much flush with the nut. You use one end of your compression fitting and you start tightening down. Uh, let me see something for a second there. All right, that's good. Now when you're in there, I just want to show you the ferrule is going to sit around here somewhere. You want to give it enough space in there to actually grip down on it. So about there is good. That's what it's going to look like. And you start threading the union in there. Let me take the other end off and what you're going to do here is you could use a, what I like to use is an open-end wrench on the actual on the actual union then on the actual nut I use a flared wrench. Make sure it's flared or else you're going to strip it so you just put that end in and tighten down. I'm not going to tighten down all the way because you get the picture. Of course it came off. Let me undo this real quick, sorry. Alright, let's do this one more time. Put it up to there. And you tighten that down. Now I don't want to do it too tight because I'm going to actually use this. So you just tighten that down like that, you get the idea. And you do the same thing on the other side. This is the other side. You put the nut in first. With the threaded piece on top of the nut. And you put the ferrule in. And it's going to sit like that. And you get your other side over here. And you start tightening that down. And do the same thing. Use your crescent wrench in the middle. Or you could use two flares if you want and start tightening that end down with the flare wrench. And what you're going to do here is once you tighten it down, like I said, pressure it, see if there's any leaks. This is where I usually put the JB Weld in here, all around here, in, in there, everywhere. Just cover the whole thing. If this is going to be in a real tight spot like above the gas tank if you're making a fuel repair. Like I said, first make sure it doesn't leak. And uh, I think that's about it for this. If you have any questions, please ask me underneath. And also, please like me. Check that box to like me. It's free to like me. It's also free to subscribe to me. All you have to do is check underneath to subscribe to me. So thanks for watching, and please come again. Take care. Ta-ta.